when the Buddha describes the steps in the Penancor Rising. On the one hand, he's describing how suffering happens, the psychology that goes into how we shape the present moment in a way that leads to suffering. But he's also describing the psychology of his listeners. You get an idea of what he's trying to accomplish by seeing how he understands what his listeners are doing. And the primary thing they're doing is they're fabricating their experience in ignorance. Got three kinds of fabrication bodily, verbal, mental. And on the large scale, that refers to bodily karma, verbal karma, mental karma, as it gives results in this lifetime and on it in the next. But in the present moment, it gets boiled down to what leads to bodily, verbal, and mental karma. And here he gives different definitions. Bodily fabrication is the in and out breathing. In other words, if you weren't breathing, you wouldn't be doing anything physically. Verbal fabrication is directed thought and evaluation. How you talk to yourself. You direct your thoughts to a topic and you make comments about it. You ask questions about it. And when you've thought in those ways, that's when you open your mouth to speak. And then finally, mental fabrication is perceptions and feelings. The labels you put on things, the feeling tones you have. And so as the Buddha is teaching you, he's noticing that the way you talk to yourself, the way you breathe, the way you hold different feelings and perceptions in the mind is causing you to suffer, and he wants you to change. He's trying to teach you how to fabricate in a new way. That's why the primary meditation exercise he gave is breath meditation. He's saying, breathe like this. Tell yourself to breathe like this. And when you tell yourself, what's that? That's verbal fabrication. And you may say, well, I've been breathing this old way. It's perfectly good. Well, it's, it's good enough, but it's good enough to keep you alive. But you can breathe in a new way that does more than just keep you alive. It can help you develop qualities of mind that will be useful. At the very least, so you can fabricate with knowledge. And you can see all the various layers in the mind, where it sides with the defilements that are out there to destroy your happiness. He's also teaching new ways to talk to yourself. This is why we have all those suttas. You get the Buddha discussing with people, and many times you see them display their defilements. And the Buddha argues with them, cajoles them, brings them to their senses. And he's showing how this is how you can use your verbal fabrication, how to talk to yourself. He doesn't give in easily to the defilements of his listeners. In fact, he doesn't give in at all. And so if you find yourself talking in ways that seem to side with your defilements, the traits of the mind that will pull you down, realize, okay, you're engaged in unskillful conversation inside, and the Buddha is giving you some tips. This is how you talk to yourself in new ways. You may say, well, that's not the way I talk to myself. But again, you want to keep on talking to yourself in the old way, or try something new? I think of the Ajans in Thailand. One of the big issues that they would focus on would be a tendency of a lot of people to say, well, I just don't have the wasana, I don't have the character traits, I don't have the part of me, I don't have the perfections from the past in order to practice. We here in the West don't tend to think in those terms, but we think in other terms. We tend to think about our childhood issues, psychological scars from the past. We say, well, this is going to make it impossible for me to practice. And the Johns would always tell their listeners, it's not the scars, it's not the past 
that's getting in the way. It's your attitude right now, what you're telling yourself. You're placing limitations on yourself, and you don't have to. This is where it's good to look at the issue of allure and drawbacks. What's the allure of your old way of talking? But let you off the hook. The fact that I can't practice is not my fault. I can put it on something in the past. But there are better ways of thinking, because that way of thinking has no future. You can think in ways that have a future. They may not be the sort of things you're used to saying to yourself, and part of you may say, well, I don't believe this because it seems so artificial. But it's artificial simply because you're not accustomed to it. Your unskillful ways are equally artificial. It's just that they've been around for a long time. You're used to them, like an old shoe. Your foot has gotten used to the shoe, even though the shoe may be bad for it. And the Buddha is saying, here, here's a shoe that will help you walk straight, help you walk health in a healthy way, help your posture. And at first it feels weird. But then you realize, after a while, if you train yourself in the new way, it does have its benefits. As the Buddha said, if it weren't possible to change your habits, you wouldn't teach. You wouldn't have taught. And if it weren't good for you to develop skillful habits, you wouldn't have taught that either. So he has faith in you. The question is, when are you going to pick up some of that faith and apply it to yourself? Because you hear it again and again, I can't do this. It's not working. Well, if it's not working right now, it's because you haven't got the hang of it yet. The past doesn't necessarily have to predict the future, because we do have this ability to change. In this area, change is a good thing. So look at the way the Buddha talks to defilements. That's what a lot of his companions in conversation are. They're representing a defilement. If it's not delusion, well, and sometimes it is anger, sometimes it is greed, sometimes it's skillful desires of other kinds. And you see, this is how the Buddha handles these people. This is how the Buddha handles these defilements. Give some idea of how do you, you can apply that same thinking yourself. This is one of the reasons why we also read the teachings of the Ajahns. They've had to argue with their own defilements. You read Ajahn Fuo, and he had a lot of quick karate chops. So it's good to adopt them, see if they work for you. And if they don't work for you, well, you have perfectly have every right to think, well, what would work? But they're showing that it can be done. And it's important that you have that trust in them and the principle that this can be done. You don't have any problems in your mind that have never been solved before. You read all the Terigata, Terigatas. You got people who are desperate, people who are suicidal. People who are proud. People didn't believe in themselves. All kinds of issues. And we see how they were able to overcome those problems. So a lot of it has to do with having trust and learning how to talk to yourself in new ways. The same with mental fabrications. All those analogies that the Buddha uses throughout the text to describe things. Those are teaching you new ways to perceive things. piece of cloth that's dirty in one spot but clean in another. That's the perception for someone who's got some good habits and some bad habits, who's someone who's been good to you in some ways and not good to you in other ways. 
And the image there is you, you take the clean part of the cloth, you leave the dirty part behind. And again with the, the ajans. Many of them are masters of analogies. And we listen to them and reread them because they're giving us new ways of applying perceptions to our problems. And here again, you might say, well, that's not the way I do it, but okay, are you satisfied with the way you do things? Are you happy with the way you do things? Where is your fighting spirit? Things can be changed. Habits, old habits can be dropped, new habits can be developed. It takes time and it takes effort, but it's time and effort well spent. Think of the image that John Munn gave in his last Dharma talk. Your discernment is the desire not to come back and be the laughingstock of the defilements ever again. Your discernment is the soldier's weapon. Concentration, mindfulness, ease of food and other su supporting factors for the soldier. So learn to think of yourself in those terms. If you've been victimized in the past, you don't have to stay in the role of victim. You can show yourself and you can show others. You can arise above that. Think in those terms. Again, that's a perception you can use. And based on the fact that you've been breathing in a new way, you have new feelings. After all, the Buddha doesn't say just stick with whatever feeling comes up. You replace unskillful feelings with more skillful ones. There's household grief and there's household joy. There's renunciant grief and renunciate joy. And you begin to realize these aren't things that simply arise willy-nilly. There are potentials for them to arise, but then what you do with those potentials is actually going to determine what the feeling is. And he's saying, replace one kind of feeling with another feeling. Replace renunciate grief. Excuse me. <coughs> replace household grief with renunciate grief. The realization that there's a goal, other people have attained it, you haven't attained it. There's a grief that goes along with that because you realize, gosh, there's a lot of work. But that's better than just going back and forth, back and forth in household grief and household joy and household grief again. At least this new kind of grief has, has hope. It offers a way out. So you can arrive at redundant joy. So again, feelings are things that you can create. You're already creating them. It's just that your habitual ways of creating them are, are causing suffering, but you can change. So you look at the Buddha's teachings, and he's teaching in a way that's just right for people who are fabricating in unskillful ways, and they need directions in how to fabricate in new ways, with the realization that it is possible to change. We're not stuck in our old ways, unless we keep ourselves stuck. We have the choice. So the Buddha is giving you some instructions on how to fabricate your experience skillfully. And there's really nothing to keep you from trying those recommendations out. 